Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to talk about QuickBooks API. So those of you who are wondering what QuickBooks is, it's basically an online accounting platform which helps you to keep track of your client data, uh, basically you know all payment related info, invoices and all those kind of stuff and it's been used by I think a lot of businesses, small businesses, it's a good tool to keep a track of all those kind of stuff. One thing which I see people facing although there are many connectors which are I'll say specific to Excel connectors but if you want to you know use that data from kind of a database it's it's not that straightforward and um, if you're watching this video I'm damn sure you are one of the QuickBooks users who is looking to get started with its API API services so that you know you can plug and play the data wherever you want to in any online dashboards or wherever you want to use it and if that's the case this is exactly what this video is about so just stay tuned and yeah like in this video we'll be talking about using quickbooks api with python and using the OAuth 2 client so yeah like that's that's the first step um, and it has some deprecated api support as well but i'm not going into that part and what i felt is the documentation of quickbooks api there is a lot of documentation but i will say it's not very decent OAuth playground is really helpful in figuring out a lot of things like i love OAuth playground even for the google client api um, like interacting with Google APIs, they have what to playground and you can just test out the API and do all kind of stuff you want to uh, just update or you know keep on modifying response parameters, requests, not response request parameters, change queries and all those kind of stuff. So that makes it really helpful to get a gist of like what exactly is going to happen. And then same with uh, QuickBooks, which is a product of Intuit, they have their own what playground and I'll leave the link of the playground in the description so that you can just go there and play around with it and we will be using that here as well. So without any further delay, let's get started. I hope this video will be helpful for you. So here we are at our folder and this is simple file structure. Uh, I've used one pip package uh, which was about QuickBooks only and just simplified it for my use case. And also I've used a virtual environment so that packages don't conflict. And assuming that you have cloned the repository and you are into this uh, the major, major folder. Uh, from there we will start. So you just need to first create a virtual environment. So I'll just open it with my code. You're free to use any editor or even directly the command line. Uh, first you go to terminal. Uh, you do the simple command python m vn and whichever virtual environment name you want to give. You can just give it because I've already created so I won't execute this command. Instead I will go quickbooks vn and then scripts and then activate. If you're using Linux, you can just go source, QuickBooks VN, bin, and then activate. But since I'm using Windows, so I don't need to do this. And now moving on. So once we have activated <coughs> the virtual environment, now we can go ahead and do pip install our requirements.txt. Now, uh, this requirement, as you can see, it's requirement already satisfied because I've already installed all these packages. For you, it'll take some time. And I just wanted to point out one importance of virtual environment here is that if you put all these packages into, uh, if you operate in virtual environment, and then if you put it in GitHub or any any other place, it's it's very safe, you know, uh, based on because you have a package with exact version number. So if, for example, if you're not op if you're operating on a global range, like uh, in case of you know uh, Node Node JS, it's it's quite uh, easy as compared to because it's not easy in a way. It's quite uh, helpful for those cases. For example, if you see uh, we have package.json and then we do an npm install and it installs all those libraries and you know it gets handy. In the same way, this this happens also. Like uh, you have to just first make a make a virtual environment and then put a requirements.txt file. You just you need to install it uh, via the command which I just showed. And the good thing about it is like basically you have all these packages, you know, so you will avoid conflict at any case. Like for example, some people will have different pip versions, different Python versions. So this particular thing ensures that, you know, you are totally in sync and everything is going, whatever I'm doing here is definitely going to work in your system as well. Uh, uh, provided that you have used the same commands and all the packages have been successfully installed. In some cases, it's like, uh, because I'm using Python 3.9, so maybe this particular version may not be available for your system. In that case, it, it can get stuck. But other than that, or in all every cases, it is definitely going to work out. Okay, so moving ahead, uh, we have this uh, environment installed. Now um, uh, I have done all the I have done all the uh, pip install requirements or txt. So everything is installed. So I'll just go to my browser now and type into it developer login. And I think this one where it is like some app API and all those kind of things. So I'll just go here and. Mm, I'll go to dashboard. I believe if you have not signed in, you have to sign in and then you may go to. So I'll just close it and open it again for 
or convenience. So I'll quickly switch to my work profile. And from here, I'll search Intuit. Unfortunately, they don't store cookies. Or maybe they do, I don't know. OK, yeah, so we are good to go. We have to go and sign in and just quickly sign in. And again, this account is develop, developer account, so make sure you sign in. If you don't have an account, you can sign up freely. It's totally free. The only thing is that you will be able to use your sandbox account, which won't be, you know, you won't be able to use your production data. But you can use it as, as much you want to test and all those kind of stuff. So this is my sandbox account. I have signed in. I'll go to dashboard. You need to create an app, and then you have to select this particular one, the first icon, which gives you QuickBooks Online and payment. And I think in case of uh, production account, you may get more options, but this is simple. You just click it here and just create an app. It, it lasts for some simple fields. Just fill it in, and then you'll have your account here. So because I've already created, so I won't go there. And then I'll go to, uh, uh, so basically I'll go to Intuit Oath to Playground. So this, this is something which is really helpful, uh, you know, to get a gist of rest, uh, RESTful API services that's happening within the QuickBooks. And it, it's, it's like much better than the documentation they have given. Because you here, you can easily you know, uh, get to know about how it works and all those kind of stuff, experiment, and then finally get to your app. So you need to select an app. I'll just select whichever I, I, was, I just created. And then client ID, client secret. So you need to take these and you know, put it into the configuration file, which I've just created. You can go for a JSON file as well. But for the simplicity, I've used this because I, I'm not sure how many of you are friendly with JSON, but I'm assuming you are definitely friendly with configuration.py kind of file. So yeah. Uh, and I, I believe this, um, this is some, uh, OK, not config.py, constants.py. Sorry, my bad. So yeah, here you can have this client secrets, QuickBook assets, QuickBooks data, and finally a refresh token. So as you can see, the one which I collected is client ID. And this one, here it is. So I'll just paste it again for the reference. And then client secret, which is this one. And you need to select the scopes. For this purpose, I'll select all the scopes and get authorization code. So yeah, these are the authorization code and realm ID. So here we will paste in authorization code and the realm ID. OK. And then I'll go down. Again, that's the same. And then get tokens. So it's a very big response because our access token is way too big. And yeah, I'll just show you. So this was my old access token. And as you can see, it's too big string. So I'll just replace it. And you, you're free to write your configuration type of you know setup. It just walks you through, like, takes the input. You can just write a simple Python program, which takes these inputs and creates the client secrets.json kind of stuff. But yeah, like this is just for the simplicity purpose. So now I've done the access token. It says expires in 60 minutes, but we don't care about that for now. And call API for accounting payments or open ID, all three, whichever you prefer. So I'll just go and get company info. And this gives me a data. Here is the response, and as you can see, it's a long response. And this one is the refresh token, which expires in 101 days. So we can just keep this refresh token, uh, you know, to use and refresh it whenever you, we want. And again, we can just keep updating this refresh token based on like whatever is the time period. We can set up a cron tab or something like that. So I'll just put a refresh token return response, and from here you can just dump JSON dump or something like that, whichever way you prefer. So I created two functions. One is to get the customer data, and the other one is to get the payment data and how it's formatted. And as you can see, I've just created simple print statements. You can remove it. But for the demo purpose, I'll be keeping it. And so here you use the refresh token response and then get the customer data based on the access token from the response. And then again, use this to uh, get the user info and same access token. And then I'm just printing the text. And yeah, so just let's just try this program. So I'll just clear it, although there's nothing. So Python main dot pi. So it will take some time because it's making an API call. And as you can see, response status is 200. So here are the data points. And I think it's done. So yeah, here you can see company info, company name, sandbox, USA, and all those kind of stuff. Because it's a sandbox-based uh, application. So yeah, it, it won't let me play with the real data, which I have. But mm, yeah, but you can see this is all data you get, uh, whether it be customers, or, like uh, the payment-related data, or you know, this is all payment-related data, what are the credit card numbers, and everything. So yeah, that's all about the QuickBooks API. I hope this is helpful. And 
you can play around with it you can tweak it especially the OAuth playground which is going to be really helpful for you and that's that's all I had to add for this video hope this will this was really helpful for you and thank you very much for the for watching it and let me know if you have any doubts or comments we'll be glad to help you with that